a real conversation about love, the answer is probably not going to be as happy as we want it to be. And then what happens is that when we start talking about marriage, because we're watching so much Bollywood, we're watching so much Hollywood, our ideas of love confuse love with infatuation. And what am I not saying? I'm saying look to spirituality by way of love. How many people here are parents? Raise your hand if you're a parent. I'm not saying you're claiming to be a good parent. Okay, a few people not show love. Okay, I'm guessing most of you hopefully at some point in your life will be a parent or want to be a parent. At that point, you will especially appreciate a type of love that you cannot even control. And that's how, believe it or not, most of your folks who never talk about love feel about most of you. They might not tell you, I love you, even though you need to hear it in this culture. They may not tell you, I value you, even though in this culture you need to hear it. In almost all of your cases, they feel it. And in their cultures, how do they illustrate love? By bending over backwards and do whatever it takes to give you the life that you can have so you can go to a school like this. And so now what I'm asking you is that when you think of love, what do you think about? In Arabic, how many synonyms do we have of love? I'm not even talking about Farsi or New or Turkish or English. We have about 60. 60 different words for love. We don't have that many words for love in English. But now what I'm asking you is, what do you think about when you think of love? What is love to you? Does love make you feel awkward? Does love make you feel uncomfortable? Or does love make you feel like, I'm so thankful that I'm alive? Does love make you feel like subhanAllah? This is the greatest exhilaration a person can imagine. And I'm telling you that each and every one of you has that capacity before even becoming a parent. And we're not even talking again about you know, your Bollywood relationship with your mythical spouse. And I'm talking about a state of being. A state of being where you are longing to be in the company of the creation of the divine. Think about this. When you think of the prophet, peace be upon him, what expression does he have? Hopefully he has a smile. But take it a step further. If you open up to the end of Surah 9, which is what many of us believe to be the most frightening of all the surahs of the Quran, Surah Tawbah, when you open it up to the last two ayahs, there's about 129 ayahs, this would be ayah 128. What does it say about the Prophet peace be upon him? That he's raised among you and it is very heavy for him when you are suffering. That is the Prophet peace be upon him to each of his followers. And what am I saying? When you interact with the people who are at your table right now, can you say it honestly that you have love for them? Now I'm really starting to look at everybody in the table. At least the guys are. Because the guys are looking away. The women are all looking at each other. But I'm asking a serious question. Can you, do you feel love for the person who's sitting next to you? Do you feel that feeling? That consciousness, that devotion, that value that you have for that person next to you, who might be a stranger, who might be a friend. Why? Because not only have you been designated with such a high level of value, so too has the person next to you, and the person after that, and the person after that. And my guess is that for many of us, the answer is no. Yeah, yeah, I love you for the sake of the love. That's what we say when we don't love someone, right? I love you for the sake of the love. Right? Like, you know, when we, when we want to say no, will you help me with this? Rather than say no, what do we say? Inshallah. Right? So what is this third point? I'm asking you to try to tap into your own heart and get a sense of love. It becomes like a muscle. 
that each and every one of us, believe it or not, we live in a highly rational society. Each and every one of us have been trained and conditioned to constantly be thinking, constantly be interpreting, constantly be interpreting. But a part within us has been experiencing atrophy to the point that we don't know how to experience it until we especially have a child. And then it begins to grow. So the question becomes, how do we develop love? I'll give you a few steps. And in fact, because of time and because I'm hungry, I'll give you one step. And that is by developing gratitude. So we say, Alhamdulillah. And we often translate because of the translation as praise be to God. But in the Arabic, it contains fanat and shukr. Praise and gratitude. So I'm going to give you a short prayer to recite at least in English. For those of you who know the Quran, this is in Surah al ahqaf Surah 46, Ayah 15. I'm only giving the first half of the Dua. Rabbi al-Zikni an ashkura ni'mataka lati amta alayya wa ala wa alayya. Rabbi al-Zikni an ashkura ni'mataka lati amta alayya wa ala wa alayya. My Lord, my cherisher, my nourisher, my sustainer. Guide me to be grateful for what you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents. There's more, but what I'm asking you to start with is just recite that one sentence. And keep reciting that sentence. Why? Because central to the idea of love is gratitude. Because if you value the person who is sitting next to you, you'll be grateful for that person's company. If you value the person who is sitting next to you, you will long for the company of their way. You know, I see Dr. Cersei here, who's one of my favorite teachers, and I always feel bad because he sends me these wonderful emails saying, hey, let's get together. And I say, yeah, I will. I'll get in touch with you six months later. I forget. And so another way to think about it is that when you're here, you get excited for seeing someone you haven't seen for a long time. That is gratitude. So what am I saying here? The first issue in love is to develop a sense of your own value. A second issue in love is to develop an appreciation for beauty. And now developing all of those, what am I suggesting? Develop a sense of gratitude. What is the opposite of gratitude? It's a sense of victimhood. Ask yourself if you feel like you're a victim. Here's a test. Do you feel like the whole world is out to kill you or attack you because you're Muslim? That's an, ad that's an attitude of victimhood. Do you feel like your parents don't listen to anything you say? That's an act of victimhood. Do you feel like you try so hard but God does not help you? That is an attitude of victimhood. That is the opposite of gratitude. When you have an attitude of victimhood, it gives you permission to be wrong. Right? We can talk about a whole bunch of political examples. So what else am I saying? That the approach of gratitude also cures a lot of these problems in your heart. And if you have gratitude, what is the promise from God? He will give you more. He will give you more. And what should that compel? Even more gratitude. So now what am I saying, my beloved brothers and sisters? I'm saying that each and every one of you is so profoundly endowed with value, so profoundly endowed with beauty, that my suggestion for each and every one of you is to feel what I feel when I see each and every one of you. Right? So many of you, you know who you are, you come to me in office hours or outside of office hours or through email or through text, and seeking my advice, seeking my help. And I love hearing from each and every one of you. I love your conversation. I love how you're trying to figure life out. Because you know the struggles of youth. Will someone love me? Will I have a career? Will I, will I be able to sustain myself? And so one of my expressions of gratitude, mine to Allah Ta'ala, is a simple opportunity to serve each and every one of you. So now what I'm obliging you to do is to extend it to other people, to pay it forward. But you won't be able to pay it forward unless you develop your own gratitude. 
So now looking at what we've talked about, number one, to define what a spirituality to you. Is it getting high? Is it getting exhilarated emotionally? Is it getting exhilarated intellectually? And none of those are wrong. And then deeper than that, what are we saying? What is it that you seek in life? And my beloved brothers and sisters, what I'm telling you is that I hope and pray that each and every one of you accomplish your goals in your career, accomplish your goals in your family, but I'm also praying that each and every one of you develops this gratitude so that you can create beauty, so that the next generation of young people, they come to you and you can help them grow. So with that, my beloved brothers and sisters, I hope, I apologize once again for being so late. I apologize for cursing the music of the 1980s. There's benefit there. There's beauty there. And that, with that, I thank you for your time and the peace and blessings of God be upon you all. Let's celebrate and welcome to the